Welcome to Beyond the Horizon podcast, a show all about the Horizon ecosystem and the exciting world of blockchain and Web3. Join us as we explore the latest happenings in this rapidly evolving space and discover new horizons together. Now let's go Beyond the Horizon. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. In today's episode, we'll be discussing Zenip 42206, which is all about redirecting secure node rewards to Horizon Eon. While this episode is fairly high level, we will be holding an AMA to discuss any questions that you may have regarding the Zenip soon. So be sure to be on the lookout for the announcement for the AMA and join us with your questions after watching this episode. We'll get into the interviews now. We'll be welcoming on Menon and John from Horizon and Horizon Labs to discuss what the Zenip means. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing the latest Zen IP, which is Zen IP number 42206, which is all about redirecting secure node rewards into Horizon Eon. Today we're joined by John Camardo and Manon, uh, whom I believe you all know. But uh, John, if you wouldn't mind reintroducing yourself to the community for us. Hey, everyone. Uh, I think this is my first trip back since the first episode, maybe. Um, I, uh, I lead the product group at Horizon Labs. Uh, I've been around for about two years now, um, been around for a lot of the more recent things that we've done, um, and excited to be back. Uh, for those in Discord who maybe don't know, I'm, I'm John C. So good to, uh, good to see everybody again. Thank you, John. And as many of you have already met uh, Menon, mother of cats in our Discord, uh, let's go ahead and allow herself to introduce herself to us more formally on the podcast since this is her first appearance with us. Welcome, Menon. Thank you. And uh, thanks, Erika, for having, having me on this podcast. Um, I'm happy to join the Beyond the Horizon today. Uh, so yes, I'm Manon. Um, I work for Horizon for five years now. Um, I love the community. Uh, that's Dominique, another ambassador, uh, a former ambassador, who presented me the project uh, five years ago. I started as a translator. Then I had my marketing degree and I joined the marketing team. Uh, that's really the Horizon project uh, who get me into passion to the blockchain. Uh, so happy to be here. Uh, and uh, thank you, everyone, for having me in this community. Absolutely. And we're all excited to have you, of course, Manon. Um, You've been an absolute staple for the last five years. Uh, so we're glad to finally bring you onto the show. Um, so today's episode, of course, is all about the Zen IP initiative to redirect secure node rewards to Horizon Eon. Of course, this means that people should probably have a little more background onto um, what that would mean. I believe we're going to be trying to redirect those funds into forgers. And I believe, John, um, if you could potentially take us through a little bit about what forgers are, that could be really helpful. Sure, yeah, thanks, Erica. I'll, I'll do my best. Um, and maybe the correct starting point is is to start with kind of like the the main chain and, and what proof of work is, just to, to do a quick recap. So in proof of work, there are, um, participants called miners who run specialized hardware um, and essentially race each other to uh, sort transactions in the appropriate manner and, and, and solve the, the puzzle that is required to, to actually create a block submitted to the rest of the blockchain um, or added to the blockchain, submitted to the rest of the network uh, and have it validated by other miners and network participants like super and secure nodes. Um, in Eon, we have something slightly different. We obviously have a proof of stake system. And in a proof of stake system, um, you put up some economic value that gives you the right to forge a block. It gives you the right to create a block. Whereas in the proof of work system, you never have the right to produce a block. You're racing everybody else to produce a block. And if you happen to solve the puzzle quicker than everybody else, you get the block reward um, if it's accepted by the blockchain. In proof of stake, we call these 
the 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 analogous um, sort of participant to the miner is the forger, and the forger um, probabilistically will earn the right to forge a block or add the block to the blockchain and submit it to the rest of the network um, based on the amount of stake that they put up relative to the total amount of stake that everyone has put up. So in our um, in our system in Eon, for example, if I owned 10% of the stake, that's to say if I have 10 Zen and the total amount staked is 100 Zen, roughly over time, I will earn the right to forge and submit a block about 10% of the time and earn the transaction fees that are included in that block as a reward for, for my participation. So hopefully um, that's a relatively high level explanation, but hopefully that clears things up and, and helps uh, kind of explain where we're at with, with Eon. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate you going into a really detailed background there. It definitely helps explain things for everybody. Um, another next step that might help people kind of understand what we're trying to do here is covering how block rewards are currently split on the Horizon main chain so they can have a little understanding of the mathematics behind that. Oh, yeah, sure. Um... Today, uh, we have 60% uh, of the uh, reward, block reward that goes for the miners, so the one who forge the block uh, on the blockchain. 10% of this block reward goes to the secure node holders, and 10% goes to the um, super node holders. We have another 20% uh, that is going to the Horizon Treasury, uh, so this is a Horizon uh, Foundation uh, that will be used soon uh, on the DAO. Uh, today, we have roughly 5,000 super nodes that are active and roughly uh, 40,000 uh, secure nodes. Um, the, super, the secure nodes were here before the, the super nodes, uh, maybe one or two years uh, before. Oh, yeah, that, that's it for the, um, the mining rewards. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, and how is the Horizon ecosystem using secure nodes today? I can maybe jump in and, and try to uh, try to explain. So um, I guess going back to the original example, um, we, we've already identified sort of all the participants in the ecosystem. But to recap, we have uh, miners who are racing each other to forge or to create blocks and add them to the blockchain. And then we have, to Manon's point, super and secure nodes. Um, and their primary purpose uh, is to contribute to a degree to the decentralization of the network. Um, and the, 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 the real other primary purpose of these nodes um, is for them to actually validate the blocks that are being created by the miners. So if I mine a block and Erica is a, a super node holder or a super node um, operator, she'll look at the block header and essentially validate that all of the transactions that are included in the block are valid and that, that block is valid and should be added to the blockchain. If it's not, then, then she won't sort of gossip with the rest of the network and pass that block on. If it is valid, then she'll gossip with her peers, the other nodes that are, that are nearby her and, and pass that block along, um, pass that block along to the rest of the network. So they participate in sort of spreading the word about a block being added to the network or not, whether or not it's valid. That was a really great um, kind of visual description of that. I really appreciated that, um, especially since, of course, I'm a huge gossip, as I'm sure nobody knows. <laughs> Um, but that kind of brings me into uh, kind of what it would look like to reallocate funds to forger nodes instead. Um, it seems like a lot of people think it'll be better to reallocate these funds, uh, but maybe you guys could take us why through why you feel that is. Yes, sure. I can jump on this one. Uh, I think that uh, no Horizon is moving forward. So we have this main chain in proof of work, and we have this side chain is in, a, in proof of stake. And we need these forger blocks to bring more decentralization on the proof of stake chain. So that's that's really a hit. Uh, we have the we are lucky to have this 
superb super uh, secure nodes um, secure nodes pool with a lot of holders uh, that can bring a lot of decentralization on the BIOS chain without um, without removing any decentralization on the main chain. So it's important to, to get this opportunity to bring this for the, the secure node holders to the for your nodes. And uh, what I would like to say is also that um, we have no, uh, we will have no more ways to, uh, to reward the community. So we have the super nodes, we have the horizon, uh, usual super nodes, super nodes that we have, the forger nodes on the uh, POS chain. Uh, we have also the mining nodes. And then we have also some rewards for the community, uh, like in Discord with the daily task. And soon we have daily question that we will have, the daily quiz that we will have on the Discord. So that's many ways to reward the community. So we can have the, the community joining and be rewarded for what they want to do for the ecosystem. If I can just jump in and, and add a couple of things, I, I, I think everything Manon said is, is absolutely right. But um, I, I do want to call out a couple of other important things. So um, I would encourage everybody to just maybe Google search quickly, like what happens when the Bitcoin, um, like until when Bitcoin mining sort of runs out or like the amount of Bitcoin that you can mine actually runs out when Bitcoin hits its terminal supply. There's a lot of questions as to how that system is going to operate and whether or not it will effectively operate and be as secure as it is today without the block reward, because it'll be entirely reliant on transaction fees. What we have with Eon is exactly what's going to happen when the Bitcoin terminal supply or even the Zen terminal supply hits. The, the forgers are entirely reliant on transaction fees that are collected um during the like normal operation of the blockchain to um to be encouraged to participate in, in forging blocks and so at least to start we're gonna like if you look right now there are may, there's maybe half a zen being collected per day by forgers collectively and there are 11 forgers running um an eon right now that's very. It's very hard to encourage somebody to come into the this, this system, this Eon system, and actually support the security of the network by forging blocks and support decentralization by adding more and more folks without enough incentive to do so. And so, as we were looking at things, and I think we'll get into this in, in a minute, in a moment, with the next question, um, we kind of saw there's main chain block reward that's being allocated um, to a number of participants. And maybe we can take some of that and, and actually push it into the side chain in order to incentivize the rest of the, this new part of the ecosystem to grow um, much like the main chain has grown kind of over the past few years. That's a really interesting point. So it kind of sounds like without uh, these larger incentives, essentially these current types of nodes, the secure nodes could potentially become a burden to the main chain. Um, is that kind of an accurate understanding? Um, yeah, yeah, it certainly is. I mean, um, I'll just, I'm actually gonna read um, a quote from a colleague who's, who's much more intelligent than me on the subject. Um, with respect to like what what is what is the situation with secure nodes and how are they burdening the main chain because i i think we alluded to this in the zen ip um and maybe didn't provide uh enough detail there so so if you'll bear with me i'm going to kind of read this verbatim and, and all credit to this individual who uh who wrote this out for me so uh so here's the quote the primary benefit of a node in a proof of work network that is not participating in mining is to validate blocks produced by the miners, um, accept valid blocks, reject invalid blocks, like I said before, and provide these blocks to the other nodes in the network. With the introduction of the cross-chain transfer protocol and the registration of the Eon sidechain, the performance requirements for timely validation of Horizon blocks has increased significantly. Blocks that contain certificates, certificates are what come from Eon and are what continue to allow Eon to operate, um, 
are much harder to validate than normal blocks. We get one of these like every couple of hundred blocks. The original minimum requirements of secure nodes, which were two CPU cores and four gigabytes of memory, are not sufficient anymore to successfully validate the main chain. In addition, cost, optimi cost optimization by secure node hosters has led to over-provisioning of many nodes on the same underlying hardware. Tens to hundreds of nodes are running on one physical server, competing for resources in some situations. And this approach was fine pre-cross-chain transfer protocol state of horizon, where the only major workload these nodes had to handle were shielded challenge transactions at random times. With the introduction of the CCTP, however, cross-chain transfer protocol, all nodes on the network will experience load spikes at the time when a certificate or block with a certificate has to be validated. Data gathered from the node tracking system shows that nodes regularly fall behind the, main, the chain tip for multiple minutes when certificates, again, these things are required to be sent from Eon to main chain, have to be validated. I get multiple alerts per day. We have an alerting system set up in Slack that says when nodes are falling behind, I get many alerts per day. And, and it kind of just goes to say, um, maybe these secure nodes are, are a little bit um, are falling a bit behind on the, on the requirements that they're they're meant to maintain, and that's not to say that all node all secure nodes are. I think the primary maybe issue is the 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 node hosters to the point made in the quote um, that uh, are over provisioning um, and and allowing multiple nodes to run on the same hardware, but it led us to kind of think like, hey, how can we lessen the burden on the main chain, and how can we stop some of this um these nodes from falling behind and the logical conclusion was hey let's try to move these um these people who are hosting nodes on on the main chain to become let's encourage them to become forgers on the side chain to enhance the security of eon um, in particular in this time when we have very low transaction volume and therefore low transaction fees collected interesting um I'm not sure who, who you were quoting, but they do, in fact, sound very intelligent. Um, so that does kind of bring me to my next question, which um, if we were to convert secure nodes to forgers, does that decrease the decentralization of the main chain at all? Yeah, sorry, coming off mute. Um, I mean, of course, it decreases the decentralization. The question you have to ask yourself is what level of decentralization is actually required for the main chain, right? And I think thousands of nodes is very much um, enough to uh, to be able to kind of fight off some of the attacks that could be possible if there wasn't sufficient decentralization. Um, so from my perspective, given number one, the um, the burden that these nodes have because of their lack of requirements causing them to fall behind is creating issues on the node tracking system amongst other things. And two, 40,000 plus nodes is great, but it doesn't necessarily mean um, that like there wasn't a threshold that we hit at 5,000 or 10,000 that wasn't sufficient to enable and maintain a level of security on the main chain that, that is sufficient. So um, my argument would be it's absolutely fine. Um, and we, we are still extremely decentralized. The other thing I would mention quickly is that like um, the nodes only contribute kind of what I mentioned before, which is the validation and transmission of blocks within the network. And they do fight off this risk of someone being able to come in the network and sort of um, take control if there are too few. But the mining is really another big component here that would be great if we had more miners. And, and those absolutely contribute to um, the level of security of, of the main chain as well, in addition to um, the like amount of decentralization, if you will, that the nodes give us. OK, yeah, no, that makes sense. Um just because there is reduced decentralization does not mean uh, that it's something that we should worry about, um, being that we have 
more than sufficient decentralization and security on the main chain already and transitioning that elsewhere uh, could potentially be better for the ecosystem itself. Um, further question, um, I know that we've kind of discussed uh, a lot of the background about uh, converting secure notes to foragers, but do you have any ideas or thoughts into what a process for converting these would look like if we were to move forward with that? Sure. Um, I want to be very, very careful with the phrasing here. Um, so I want to eliminate the use of the word converting. There will be no converting that any that we do or that um, there's no conversion process here. I believe what the process will be, and, and there will be a lot more details to come, and there will be a test net set up where people can go through this process themselves. But it, I, I believe what the process will be is you will spin down your secure node if you run it yourselves or stop paying a provider to, um, to run that node for you. You will unstake your Zen, and then you will spin up new hardware I believe um, the, 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 the current hardware may be sufficient. I, I'm not entirely sure yet, um, but you'll spin up new hardware that is a forger node that runs the Eon software and you will delegate whatever amount of Zen you deem that you want to delegate to that forger node um, to be able to participate in Eon consensus and potentially earn transaction fees and the um, portion of the 10% of the block reward that we're looking to reallocate from the main chain that will be allocated to each block in the side chain. Okay, so not a conversion, but more of a transition from one thing to something new. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, as somebody who does not participate in secure nodes or forgers myself, um, and Manon, I think you do have some background in this. Uh, what do you think of that potential process? Do you think that would be something difficult for the people who are actively participating in running secure nodes? Um, no, I think that would be really easy. Um, I have some nodes and uh, that, that, is, that are hosted nodes. Uh, I don't host them myself, but uh, I think that I will just have to withdraw my Zen from the from the main chain to move then on the Eon, uh, Eon address and then just either stake myself uh, the, the, the further nodes with the Zen that I have or uh, to uh, to delegate the, the Zen to another forger nodes. Uh, the question I still uh, ask myself is that do I uh, remove my super nodes to make them on the forger nodes or do I keep my super nodes? So, but that's the only other question uh, that I have to ask myself. And the, the thing that I'll, I'll add here is, um, I, I think to start, it is going to be much more difficult to spin up a forger node on your own than it is to participate in the secure node um, situation uh, as it is today, right? Because there won't be node, there won't be node hosters that you can allocate, you, that you can pay to, to run this hardware for you and allocate your Zen to those nodes. But this is a brand new system, as were the secure nodes at one point. And I'm sure at that point I wasn't a part of the community, but I'm sure that there were not providers that were able to spin up infrastructure on your behalf. And so I believe that because we're trying to create an economic sort of market around this by allocating this block reward to Eon, there will almost certainly be providers who enable you to delegate your Zen to them or run a fortune note on your behalf at some point in time in the future after we provide the sufficient documentation which we're looking to provide um, that gives people the ability to, to do so and, and understand step-by-step step how they would do so. Okay, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that you added that on, John, because that was going to be my next question is if you thought that in the future, we would see these providers doing that similar to how they do with secure notes today. So thank you so much for providing that background there. 
And we'll move on to the next question, um, because I think that essentially we've we've focused a lot on this in this episode, as we should. Um, But what we haven't focused on is the potential for running both super nodes and Eon Forgers simultaneously. Could someone potentially choose to do both? Are you asking on the same hardware? Or are you asking, can I run two different nodes? Uh, I'm going to say both. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's nothing stopping anybody from spinning up a secure node, a super node, and a forger, right? Like, there's nothing stopping anybody from running a miner, mining rig, and being a forger on Eon. Um, these are these are open networks. Anybody can participate, um, and anyone can participate to the degree that they wish to participate. Um, with respect to can I run a forger node and a secure and a super node on the same set of hardware on the same hardware? I don't know. I, it'll depend on the hardware. It'll depend on the requirements, which again are forthcoming. Um, and whether or not the super node, um, will still be able to meet the requirements that are asked of it, of the main chain today. So um, a bit of a nuanced, I think, answer to that question, depending on your situation and all that thing. But if you have the sufficient hardware that can can do both, then I'm, I'm almost certain that you could do both. Great answer. Okay, so we just have a couple of questions left. Of course, one of those questions was going to be, when will the Forger specifications be published? And as you've mentioned, it is forthcoming. So uh, the community can look out for that. Of course, we will announce that information as soon as it's available to everybody since we have been getting quite a few questions around that um and and let me let me give everybody a bit of a roadmap to that point so um so today we're working on kind of constructing sufficient documentation that will live on our eon documentation site um, where anybody can go in and, and read and understand what is going to be required of a forger node Within the next month and a half to two months, we will enable forging um, by anybody on testnet where you can get ready to participate in mainnet consensus on Eon by setting up the hardware that's required, if you wish, by following the, the, the instructions on the docs site, which will be there within a few weeks. Um, and start to understand what it's going to take to participate there. And then shortly thereafter, after we've done some sufficient testing on our side, after the community has had, or anybody who wants to run a node has had the ability um, to test out the forger situation on testnet, we will um, enable all of that on mainnet so that um, people can start to, to participate in consensus on, on Eon. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the roadmap. I know the community has been pushing for this information. Um, So uh, it sounds like it is coming very soon. uh, So people uh, will be able to take a look at that and then start testing, which is fantastic. Which leads me to our last question. Um, Is there anything else that either of you would like to say about Zenip 42206? I would just say... Let's go for this IP to be live. Uh, the, the ecosystem is moving forward. Uh, the secure nodes and super nodes were great, but now we need uh, we need something else in the ecosystem as we have the side chains and the POS chain that is live. Uh, we want the Horizon Neon to be the most successful um, as it can be, uh, either if you are a team member or a community member. So uh, the this IP is the best way uh, to bring decentralization to Horizon Neon and to make Horizon Neon successful. So let's go for that. Absolutely agree. Um, and I'll say a couple of other things. So one is um, change is, is tough and change is hard. And, and it's, um, it's, not a, it's not a decision that, we, that we've um, decided to try to make uh lightly so like we understand that there is an impact to community members we understand that there's um, an impact to people who are hosting secure nodes um 
and that that's going to require change and it's going to it, it have an impact on, on people's kind of bottom line. However, uh, we believe that it's the right decision for the community to, to vote yes on um, because of the, the, the reasons that I enumerated before, the, the burden that these secure nodes are kind of having on the main chain now with the increased requirements of validating certificates um, and the lack of sufficient sort of um, economic incentive to promote decentralization on EON. Um, so we believe that this is the right decision to make. We encourage everybody to, um, to think hard about it and um, ask further questions. I, I believe we're going to be doing an AMA as well. Um, I don't know if it'll be live or just kind of on Discord, but I, I believe I'll be participating because I think I suggested it. Um, and the other thing I'll just call out is like, while a lot of people have pointed to a loss of kind of economics on like earning from these secure nodes, I would point out that there's a, there's a, I guess a couple of things that maybe are, are being lost in that discussion. And one is the, probably the most important is that Eon brings with it a lot of new potential for people to create sort of economies, create opportunities for themselves through decentralized finance, through other sort of smart contract application, decentralized apps um, that weren't possible before really on horizon. And now, Zen will be able to allow you to participate and pay transaction fees to participate in those protocols. And so while it may look like there is an opportunity, a door that's closing, I think that there are a number of doors, um, and at least I hope that there will be a number of doors that people can see opening with Eon that will enable um, them to regain some of the opportunity that they may perceive that they're losing. Um, so that's pretty much all, all kind of I'll add there. Um, I do think it's the right thing to do, especially for Eon in its nascent state. Thank you so much. Uh, and as John mentioned just now, we will be doing an AMA to address further questions that people may have had or currently have um, after watching this episode. So stay tuned for announcements on when that will be. Of course, we will be dragging John into this because he um, just volunteered himself for it. So um, we look forward to further discussing this as well as further communicating how we'll be handling this vote for the Senate in the future. Uh, so so be on the lookout for that on all social platforms. Thank you so much, John and Manon, for joining us today. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you, Erika. Thanks, Erika. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Horizon. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue to discover the limitless potential of the Horizon ecosystem. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.